what is up friends, followers, and if you're new here, hi. I decided to do something and I figured I'd stay a little bit festive since we're still in October. But I wanted to do something fun and console related that I've been waiting to do for a while now. And that is Dreamcast. Yes, I absolutely love Dreamcast. Probably my favorite console of all time. That's always one of those things where it's like super hard to say, how can that be your favorite? How can you pick just one? I really can't. If I was stuck somewhere and could only have one console with me, I think it would be a good one. And let me tell you why. Because for one thing, you have this huge library of Sega games, right? So you have Naomi and Model 3. And then on top of that, you have all these awesome games that came out for it, like Code Veronica and Blue Stinger, which some people hate, but I love it, and a bunch of other games, right? But then on top of that, you can emulate PlayStation games and, well, some PlayStation games, and you can emulate SNES and NES games. So it's pretty good, yeah. Today, we're gonna go over all of my Dreamcast accessories and see how many I'm missing. I don't think I'm missing very many. If we're talking about big peripherals, steering wheels, stuff like that, which we're gonna get into, I don't think I'm missing too many. You guys have to see this. If you guys didn't know, the Dreamcast is literally an at-home arcade. So we've got a lot of awesome stuff to go over and look at today, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So let's go. Hey, are you still here? <laughs> all right, good. We've got a bunch of cool stuff to look at. First, we're gonna be looking at all of the Dreamcast accessories. No, wait, scratch that. First, we're gonna unbox the Dreamcast. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna look at all the Dreamcast accessories. And the really cool thing about Dreamcast accessories is the fact that Dreamcast was basically a Naomi. The Sega Dreamcast arcade counterpart, the Sega Naomi, has the same CPU, the Hitachi SH4, at the same clock rate, but is more powerful in other ways, including an updated PowerVR2 GPU with faster performance, additional RAM and VRAM, higher bandwidth, and faster ROM cartridge storage. Source, SegaRetro.org But anyways, my point is that Sega released all the peripherals that were in the arcade for the Dreamcast. So you could essentially play any Dreamcast game just like it was on the arcade. This is one of the things that was absolutely incredible about the Dreamcast. It was the first home console that really felt like an arcade system in your house. And they released everything from light guns to fishing rods to even little speakers that you could talk to characters in games with. So let's get into it and check out all the goodies. All right, now what makes this extra cool is that I have had this since the release, well, the US release on 9999. <laughs> We got her! Hi, Randy. Well, hello. It's thinking. Somehow I've managed to keep it all in one piece. So let's re unbox the Dreamcast from 1999. oddly shaped but ergonomic and comfortable Dreamcast controller. And that's right, 
They used to come with demo discs. Oh, governing the use of modems, the instruction manual. The lovely, the beautiful Dreamcast. Interesting fact about this one, I have had it since 99. I had to replace the CD reader in it, which was no big deal. I just bought a junk one from Japan and used that. Running Windows CE, and as you can see here, you can actually pull this dial up spot out for the modem and put in a LAN uh, adapter right here. There's a serial port, there is a video port, of course, power port. And you have four plugs. All right, let's get into peripherals. I would say I have a good amount of the important peripherals minus the flight stick. I wanted to start with the light gun, so let's check out Virtue Cop 2 and House of the Dead 2. This is not Sega's official light gun, which as far as I know was never distributed in the US, but it is the Interact Starfire. I've owned both of my Starfires since probably 2000, and I've never had an issue with either of them. So kudos to Interact for that quality build. Silent Scope and Confidential Mission are two other games that support light guns on Dreamcast as well as well as Demolition Racer and Death Crimson. While the list remains short, they are memorable and mostly staple titles. House of the Dead 2 remains a fan favorite to this day, and it's still a great game, uh, very fun to play with the light gun, and the Interact light gun is nice because it's not very heavy, which, to be honest, if you're playing a light gun game for a long time, you don't want a gun that's really heavy. And its accuracy is very good as well. While the Sega light guns are smaller and on brand, I really do like the Starfire. If you're familiar with my style of games, then you know that I am definitely a fighting game fan. So having the Sega fight stick is a must for me. Now, unfortunately, I was having some issues with my joystick, which I think needs to be replaced, but I absolutely love this fight stick. And it has a hefty feel, so when it's sitting on your lap, it's very comfortable and it stays in place. I thought I'd show you guys that code breaker because it is how I play Japanese games on my Dreamcast disc system. Obviously, on the GDMU setup, I don't need it. And I'm pretty sure that they're available on Etsy or eBay. I can't remember, it's been a long time since I got it. But I do know, unfortunately, that they are getting harder to find as far as being downloadable and burnable. Of course, you could always splurge and just buy a junky Japanese Dreamcast for 30 bucks. So if you watch, you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble pulling off complete combos here. And most of it comes from the joystick, although I was noticing that I was missing hits on the buttons as well. I mean, this thing is now decades old, but it's definitely a must in your Dreamcast accessory collection. So if you like shmups, this next game is definitely for you, and it plays great on the arcade stick. This game is by Duranik, and it's called Sturmwind. It is one of the coolest shmups that I've played and it was originally developed on the Atari Jaguar and then moved over to the Dreamcast. It is a fantastic arcade style shooter and it's also available on Switch. Mars Matrix and Radigree are also among the list of games that you can play with the arcade stick. Highly recommend checking the arcade stick out if you do not have one, it belongs in your collection. They do seem to be getting more expensive and harder to come by in working condition as well. So stay frosty on your treasure hunting and collecting. Next, we have the official Sega fishing rod thingy. 
This one is good for games like Sega Marine Fishing, Sega Bass Fishing, Sega Bass Fishing 2, and I'm sure there must be a couple more that I'm missing on that list. It does do a good job of giving you a kind of authentic fishing experience for its age. And obviously it stays true to its arcade counterparts. Next up, we have the keyboard, which could be used for the internet and also typing of the dead. Now, if you're wondering, was this ever released in the arcade? Well, it was in fact released in the arcade, at least in Japan. Take a look at this picture of a Blast City modified with two keyboards. Pretty weird, right? But also unique and something that would be pretty cool to have in a collection. So to my surprise, unfortunately, my Mad Cat steering wheel was not working at all. So I couldn't demo it for you guys. But it is a great accessory to have because there are a lot of good driving games on the Dreamcast, Sega Rally, 18 Wheeler, F355, MSR, Hydro Thunder, and a ton other that use the steering wheel. All in all, these are my favorite accessories for the system. It would be cool to have a flight stick, but these are the ones that I definitely would be using the most, minus the fishing rod probably. Rip my Mad Cat steering wheel. I might try to fix it though. The only thing I can ever remember using the mouse for was the internet. And the keyboard was the internet or typing of the dead. I do believe there are some Hello Kitty games that the keyboard works with and possibly the mouse, but I never played them. If you're looking for a really comprehensive and detailed list of accessories for the Dreamcast, I would definitely recommend going to bordersdown.net and Sega Retro. There are tons of resources out there when it comes to this stuff. These are two of my favorites because they have pictures and text sheets and there's just a lot of details. These are my controllers and VMUs and you guys saw the Retro Fighter at the beginning. Uh, but one last mention is the microphone that you got with Seaman. Seaman was this really bizarro game where you basically had this digital pet that you could talk to and it would be sassy to you and kind of had a personality based off of how you spoke to it. Kind of got a little bit weird if you know what I mean. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a fun one to make. I still play my Dreamcast. Let me know down in the comments if you play your Dreamcast, what your favorite game is. If you had the accessories, which one was your favorite? I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Stay safe out there, and until next time, I'll see you then.